what makes the Fu versus Shu case so amazing is that we've had two wealthy families that are making deals together for about a decade, and then they finally have a falling out over three expensive properties they own in the west side of Vancouver. So to solve their dispute, they go to Canada's civil courts. And what that does is open them up to exposure of at least seven kind of illicit things that they are doing in regards to Canadian taxes, in regards to Canadian real estate, and in regards to their own immigration status. One of the things they clearly were shown to be doing in this civil case was that they were lying about how much time they spent in Canada. You have to spend two years out of five in Canada when you're a landed immigrant in order to get citizenship. And the parties involved were complaining that that was like living in immigration hell uh, or that they were in an immigration jail. It's a common term used amongst wealthy immigrants to Canada who just want the passport. They're not that interested in moving here. The other thing that was pretty amazing and uh, tax lawyers and immigration lawyers uh, are just amazed by how much uh, chutzpah the family had to expose these issues to the public through the courts. One of the kind of breadwinners was worth probably hundreds of millions of dollars in China because he owned a major textile mill. And he declared to um, Canadian Revenue Canada that his total worldwide income was $97.11. And the judge, Griffin, she just said, that's unbelievable. The families have opened themselves up to the long arm of the law coming down on them in Canada. But unfortunately, tax and immigration lawyers in Canada say Canada almost never enforces these tax scams or even immigration scams. So Canada has a problem.